What's up YouTube, Kyle Litter, aka Smooth Flipper. Welcome back to a new video. In this video, I want to talk to you guys about the 10 steps on how to become a successful phone flipper in 2019. Now these steps aren't in any particular order and um, some of them are maybe basic for some of you guys, but this video is um, geared towards those who are just starting, who are just wanting to get started in phone flipping or who have already just started in phone flipping. So I know I'm getting a lot of new people coming in um, from previous videos that I uploaded about, you know, real estate, other other topics. Some of you guys are coming in and you guys are wanting to learn more about phone flipping. So I decided to uh, kind of give you guys 10 tips or 10 steps to kind of boost, um, you know, your success in phone flipping. So, um, again, these aren't in any particular order. I'm just going to go through them. I'm going to kind of, you know, just, you know, give you guys a little description on each one and Hope you guys enjoy it. So let's get into it. So number one, this is the one thing that I always, you know, let you guys know and tell you guys in my videos is to post ads every day. Now this is very crucial, um, just because our goal is to get as many ads out there as possible. We want as many eyes on our ads as possible. And without you posting every day, you're not, you know, maximizing your potential. Um, and the amount of leads you get, which, you know, you get more leads, it leads to more deals. So, um, if you post ads every day, don't skip any days, post them on all platforms, um, every day, just do it every day. Have it, you know, if you, if you need to put on your phone, a, a little notification where let's say at 2 PM every day, you have to post ads, no matter what you're doing, stop what you're doing, post ads, unless you're driving, obviously, um, post those ads, get them out the way. I mean, it takes you know less than ten minutes to post ads on all platforms. So, if you don't have ten minutes to spare, then then unfortunately the business is not for you. But if you do, and you have that you know ten minutes uh, to post ads every day, then do it. You're going to um, really see a difference when you start doing this. So yeah, number one, post ads every day. Number two, provide top-notch customer service as a buyer or seller. Now this is very very important. And I've went through many different uh, situations where, you know, providing good customer service worked in my favor. Now, um, whether I'm whether I'm a buyer or a seller, if I'm a seller and I'm making sure that they like the phone, I make sure that they put their SIM card in there. I make sure they make a phone call. I make sure that they uh, text a friend or text me to see if everything is working because I don't want anything or the customer to come back and say, hey, this phone's not working. You know, I know I've already checked the phone beforehand when I bought it, but just just for, you know, my peace of mind and their peace of mind, I want to always kind of go through those steps so there's no, you know, miscommunication on, on whatever. If, if they think the phone is a Verizon phone and it's a GSM unlocked phone, um, then that could be a problem. So you want to make sure you go through all those different steps. Again, guys, you know, sometimes you might get people who are rude, who, who don't respect you on Facebook or whatever, who, who just talking mess or, or being a hater, um, you know, your response says a lot about your character. If you respond in a, in a malicious way, um, you know, kind of, kind of doing what they did to you, then it doesn't look good on your part, especially in, in a public, uh, in the public eye when people are seeing these and I've seen people do it, you know, people are going back and forth on Facebook groups and it's like, you know, we have a reputation to defend, so obviously we're not going to put up with someone calling us a scammer if that's not true, but there's ways of replying to that, you know, and, and being as professional as possible without any insults and, and, and anything of that nature, uh, you should be good to go. You know, some people do these things, but anyway, providing customer service top notch, whether it's buying or selling, you have to do it. It's just part of, part of the business. It goes a long way. Uh, when people who sell to you, you know, they have an enjoyable experience, experience, then they go ahead and tell their friends or they go back and contact you again when they have other phones for sale. So again, number two, providing top notch customer service. Number three, this is when you're buying, never pay asking price. Now this is very important because, um, our goal here is to make money, you know, regardless of how you want to put it, the goal here is to make money. Now, um, I'm not saying go ahead and lowball everybody or, or, you know, just insult them with your offers. But usually when I ask them how much they're looking to get for it and they, and they, you know, reply with a decent price, you know, they can say, 
okay, I want 250 for my unlocked 8 plus, 64 gigs. Um, perfect condition. You know, that's a good price. That's a good price. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to counter. I'm going to counter and say, hey, I'll give you 220 Now, if they wanted 250 nine times out of ten, they're going to accept that 220 offer. Now, you just put uh, 30 bucks in your pocket by just, you know, not paying their asking price. So you make more money by doing it. You know, you don't want to say, okay, since this person wants 250, I'm going to give them 120. Now that's ridiculous. But you want to make sure that um, you are making money as well. You know, you're maximizing your profits on the deal. So not a fast asking price, even when you're on marketplace looking at deals, even if it's a good deal. I mean, sometimes you're going to have to pay, um, you know, asking price if there are a lot of people who have already inquired about the um, phone, but if not, if, you, if they just posted it, they want 250 you offer them 220 they take it, you meet them ASAP, you just put $30 in your pocket. So that's number three, never pay asking price. Number four, always meet up inside a public place, Starbucks, McDonald's. And this is very, 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 very important, people. Now, no matter what the deal is, no matter how much money you're making on this deal, it does not matter. You have to meet in public public places. You just have to. I don't care if they say, hey, I have 10... 10s maxes for 400 a piece. They're all unlocked. They're all sealed. Whatever they say, hey, okay, that's fine. I'll buy them. Just meet me up at a Starbucks or McDonald's. Now, if they refuse to do that, that's your red flag. Um, if you are inside the Starbucks or McDonald's or whatever you whatever place you're gonna choose to meet, make sure it's inside. If you're in that, if you're inside and you're waiting, and they say, hey, can you come outside? Say, hey, I just don't feel comfortable with that. Um, can you please come inside? It's gonna be pretty. It's gonna be pretty quick. And if they just refuse to come inside, that's your red flag. You probably dodged a bullet. You probably dodged um, getting robbed. So um, make sure you always meet up inside. I don't. It doesn't. Now, when I say um, in a public place, I don't mean outside of a McDonald's in the parking lot or outside of a Starbucks. You just meet inside. It doesn't take long to get out your car, walk inside, sit down, and just wait. Wait for them to come and do the transaction there because. If, if their intentions were to rob you, then um, you know once you once you meet the site, they got to be really crazy to go ahead and 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 uh, try and rob you inside. Now it's, I've heard that it happened before, but um, this is the best way we can keep ourselves safe. So always meet inside public place. It doesn't have to be Starbucks or McDonald's. Those are my two favorite places to meet. But wherever you have a um, you know fast food restaurant that's you know fairly crowded throughout the day those are the best spots to meet up all right number five use common sense now this one um some of you guys are probably thinking like you know why would you say that now and i've seen it guys i've seen it a lot I, you know i coach a lot of people um i have a facebook group that a lot of posts are being posted about this and that and you know at the end of the day guys it's all about just having that common sense you don't have to be an expert in phone flipping to to make good decisions um, you know, just because you, you have that common sense, you know, there's some things you should do and some things you shouldn't do. Um, you know, in certain, certain listings you may have on, on Facebook, you know, some, sometimes you just don't say, say things. I've seen people say, Hey, uh, I'm trying to sell this phone. I, you know, I found it in the trash can, um, blah, blah, blah. So they're just like, I mean, they're telling everything about the phone. But in, in that sense, I wouldn't even list that phone if, if that was the case. So just having some kind of, kind of common sense, you know, uh, goes a long way in anything you do. It doesn't have to be phone flipping. Um, it could be anything. You can do phone flipping. You can be thrifting on eBay uh, at Goodwill. Anything you, you know, uh, put your mind to, just having that common sense will help you and go a long way. You know, um, I'm trying to think of an example. I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. But you guys get the, you guys get the picture, you know. Just having that common sense, doing things that, you know, um, out of whack type things, where it's like, man, why is this guy doing this? That person doesn't have common sense. So um, that's that. So number five is use common sense. Number six, always leave after the person you've bought sold a phone to. Now, um, this is also important because you know I've heard different stories where people are buying or selling something and you know that person is following them all the way home they get that they get to the house and then they get robbed so 
Um, I always make it a point to leave after the person. You know, I don't want, I, I always get there beforehand because I don't want to, you know, I don't want them to know what car I'm in. And then when you leave after, you're also not letting them know what car you're in. Because at the end of the day, we've already seen this, you know, especially in the, in the United States, people are crazy. Um, that's just the reality of it. Some people are just crazy. Um, they're not, they're not all the way there thinking straight. And, you know, they might think it's a good idea to rob you. So if you do all these different things, these, these things to prevent or help prevent from getting robbed, then that's all we can do. You know, um, it is a risk meeting up with people that you don't know to buy their devices, especially if you're spending a lot of money. But these tips are going to help you, uh, you know, go a long way when it comes to safety. So that's one thing that I am uh, an advocate of. I, you know, I don't care how good the deal is. I'm not meeting you at your house, I'm not meeting you inside your car, I'm not meeting you down at the alley. Um, at 10 o'clock so um, just make sure you do this so if you, even if you even if you sold the phone to somebody just make sure you know they they could probably be following you and and rob you for the money that, you, that, they, that they just gave you so um, just make sure you're you're safe make sure you're smart about it don't leave or don't don't be like you know so eager to leave just wait a little bit wait about five ten minutes make sure that they they're gone then you go ahead and get in your car and go home so Make sure you leave after the person you've bought or sold a phone to. Number seven, follow up with the leads that fell through. This is a um, you know a tip that I've been saying for a while since I've been making videos. I think I have about a, like two or three videos on this topic. But following up is you know one of the best ways to get deals, just because um, people you you talk to every day, you know. You're gonna get a lot of no's. You're gonna get a lot of people that say, "Hey, you know, that's not a good deal for me. No thanks, or I can't accept that price." On Monday, let's say all those deals are on Monday. Now Friday comes along, things have changed with that person. You never know; their car could have broke down. You know, they they have a they have, well, they have, they might have a uh, bill that they need to pay on a Friday. Um, they might need money to go out. You know, you never know the circumstances uh, for the sellers. You know. Um, so you, it's important for you to follow up to say, Hey, um, I'm still interested in buying your phone. Um, at this price, I can meet you up today if you want. Now they, they might say no, then I, it is what it is. But if you mesh this 10 people with the follow up, you might get one or two people that say, yeah, and there you go. You just made some money that day. So especially when things are slow, I know things have been slow for a lot of people lately following up regardless of what regardless of what business you're in is important you know a lot of a lot of businesses follow up with people just to make sure you know because some people forget i get a lot of people who say yeah man i actually forgot to reply back to you now it could have been like you gave them a price they read it you probably thought hey this person you know probably thought my offer was too low so they didn't respond but sometimes they just say hey i just i just forgot to respond and with that follow through, you just remind them and then you, you're going to close that deal right there because um, you did your part in following up. So follow up with everybody no matter what. Um, and if they say no, the, the next time you follow up, follow up with them again a, a week after if they didn't sell it. You know, so following up is very important. When you post those ads that same day, you follow up with the people from last week, from a couple of days ago. Um, you're going to get more deals. You're going to get more phones, which leads to more money. So follow up with the leads that fell through. Number eight, hand out business cards. Again, guys, marketing is important. You don't, you don't just post ads every day, uh, and, and think that's gonna, that's going to be it. As far as marketing, you have to hand out business cards, tell folks what you do, tell your family to promote you, um, uh, you know, pay people to, to, to promote you. Whatever you can to get your name out, to get your services out, out there in your area, um, you have to do it. You just have to do it. Handing out business cards is something that I do a lot. You know, this here's a business card I have right here. I do this a lot. Um, when I sell a phone, I give them my business card. Um, when I'm out and about, people are saying, hey, you know, when I'm out at Starbucks, people are looking at what I'm doing. If I pull out cash, buying phones, somebody's going to usually come up and say, hey, you know, what, what's, what are you doing? You buying phones? You know? And, or they'll make a comment about how many phones I have. And I'm like, yeah, well, I buy and sell phones. Um, here's my card. If you have anything to sell, if you want to buy something, just let me know. 
and I'm, I'm doing that. I'm getting my name out there. If I wouldn't have given them a business card or um, let them know what I do, then they would have never known. They just made that comment. I, you know, I felt like the comment um, was a great way to promote myself, and I did it. So, and, I, and I've done that plenty of times. I remember the last time I just met up with somebody, um, a lady said, hey, what are you doing? You know, I see you always here buying phones. And I'll let her know, hey, I buy phones. Here's my card. Bam, there you go. So hand out business cards, um, and you, sh you should be good to go. Just, you know, and, and Vistaprint. Go on Vistaprint, guys. There's a bunch of designs for business cards. They're cheap. You can get like 500 business cards for like $12. So there's no excuse why you shouldn't have business cards. And when you do get them, make sure you hand them out. Number nine, ask seller if they have anything else for sale. This is a golden question here, guys. Um, you know, because some people, some sellers just feel like, you know, you may not be interested in their phone, in their other phone or other devices, but you, you might be interested in them. You know, if they're selling you an XR and they're like, hey, okay, I accepted your deal. I'll sell my phone for 200 And they have a 7 Plus. Verizon unlocked, you know, no issues, um, sitting on their on their their drawers or something. Sometimes they may not, you know, let you know that they have that because they don't think you will buy it because it's so old. They think it's so old. So if you say, hey, you everything else for sale that I can buy as far as phones or iPads, they might say, hey, actually I do. I have a seven plus, and I have an iPad Mini um, two or whatever, whatever whatever it is. You know, you're, you're, you know, asking these questions to get more devices from that same person. Now, you turned a one phone deal into a three device deal from just one person just by asking this question. So, ask this question, guys. Anytime you're dealing with somebody, anytime that, that they accepted your offer, ask them if they have anything else for sale. And, um, you know, you should see more devices when you do that. So, that's number nine. Number ten. This is probably the last, this is the last one here. Stay consistent. Everything that I mentioned from one through nine, I need you guys to do that every single time, every single day, every single time, every single time you're in that situation, do it every time, meet inside every time, um, hand out business cards, you know, do all these different things consistently and you will see consistent results It's you know, this business comes comes easy once you have a, uh, a, a flow, a steady flow of being consistent, of posting ads, of doing everything that you have to do to succeed. It becomes easy when you're consistent. You know, now if you're like, you know, doing things, you know, 50% of the time, you're going to find it harder to find more deals because, you know, you're, you're putting in 50% of the work, you know, so when you, when you are consistent 100%, um, you're going to see a growth in your sales, a growth in your profit, a growth in the amount of phones you're picking up daily, weekly, monthly. You're going to see as far as long as you're staying consistent throughout the entire deal. Um, that's that's numbers one through nine that I mentioned in this video. Do that, but do that consistently and then you should see results. So that's that. That's the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to want to make a uh, basically kind of a recap video of, of videos that I've done in the past, just put it all in one video for some of you new guys who are wanting to get started. Now, if you if you do enjoy the video, please drop a like. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.